either way, right? But I, in my mind, I had to have a magnetic monopole. So I took a magnet and I cut it in half. Everybody ever do this? Yeah. You break the magnet in half and what do you get? Same. You get two magnets each with a north and south pole. Yeah? And you cut those magnets in half. And I did this. I kept doing this, right? And every little bit of magnet that I got, got a north and a south pole. Yes? Okay, why is that? Well, let me just explain why that is, okay? What it is, is that, that basically this thing is a North Pole. This is the North Pole. And the reason that it's a North Pole is that the electrons are actually going more clockwise than anti-clockwise. Charge going in a circle, and we're going to learn this today, makes a magnetic field. That's all magnets come from that, yes? Okay, so all of this is the nature of these things that, that uh, iron and I believe nickel, right? has a net direction of electrons moving, right? And these things, these electrons are actually going clockwise. Okay, it's a little bit tricky because electrons are negative charge, right? And so I know that positive charge would go anti-clockwise as seen from above. So therefore, electrons are going more clockwise. Now, if I slice this magnet anywhere, it is always true that all throughout this material, since it's all magnetic, it's all a permanent magnet, right? That all, and no matter how I slice it, it's always that they're going clockwise. And so there's always a north pole on the top and a south pole on the bottom, no matter how finely I slice it. Until I get down to a single atom, and even that atom will have a north pole and a south pole, yeah? Because that's what it is, right? And if I break that atom, then I've, I've, I guess I've killed the goose that lays the golden eggs. There's no magnetic field, right? I can't, it's like, there it is, right? So I could have kept going all the way down to the atomic level. I never would have had a magnetic monopole. And this is sad. If I did, and I had done that, I would have gotten a Nobel Prize, which, you know, that's also sad, right? Okay, but then I'd be like rich and famous, and yeah, you wouldn't have me as a physics teacher, so you know. Um, and then you know, how do those freaking magnets pick stuff up? Well, okay, here's here's the deal, right? Uh, here's a magnet. Here is a ferrous material, which I'll have a lot of fun with if Brian Ferris takes. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so. Uh, but here's, here's this material, and this material is magnetically malleable. It is magnetically malleable. So let me just sort of give you an idea what I mean by that, okay? A magnetically malleable material, okay? In a magnetically malleable material, the, the, um, here, I need a big magnet. I'll use this guy here. <laughs> Don't mess with these things. These things will smash your fingers. Okay. Now, if you look at this, the compasses, let's pretend that these guys are all atoms. Yeah? Those guys are all atoms. And when I bring this magnet in, they're already excited about this magnet. So you're like, woo. <laughs> okay. Okay. But when this guy comes into town, when this guy comes into town, watch what they do. Watch what they do. Do you see that? That they all orient to this external field? So iron is a little bit like that. If we bring an external magnetic field close to a piece of iron, there are little things called domains, which are sort of like voting blocks. Think, think electoral college, right? They all tend to little chunks of crystal in the metal um, that all tend to sort of swing in the same direction, right? So think of those compass needles as little aggregations of, of atoms, right? And they're all sort of swinging. Try to explain the electoral college, by the way, to any other country, somebody from another country. They're like, what? Right? Okay, but anyway. These guys, these guys all swing, and they orient themselves more or less to the direction. Now watch the ones farther away from it. Do you see that they're not quite as enthusiastic? Do you see that? So there's actually more alignment close to the magnet, less alignment farther away. This is key. This is a key thing. Okay. And then also notice that, that um, this side is the North Pole. So notice that I've got like the attention of all the South Pole sides. Do you see that the south pole sides of all those compasses are closer to this magnet than the north pole sides? Yes? Yes? Yes, this is a key concept. Okay. Now, in the same way that we had induced charge, and we talked about this with induced charge, right? If we have an object, and let's just draw a thing with, with charge, right? If I've got a charged object, say this is positively charged, right? If this is a piece of metal, this side will be negatively charged, this side will be positively charged, right? And then we talked about this, right? This is how static charge picks up little bits of paper or something like that, right? Or lint or whatever, right? Or why that sock sticks to your leg that comes out of the dryer, right? Like, get off, okay? Um, and that's because these guys are attracted 
but these guys are repelled, but the force of repulsion is smaller. Why? It's farther away, and the, and, the, and the field drops off, right? Well, think about the magnet, right? If we bring this in, we get an induced field. The, this side swings to the North Pole, right? And the South Pole attracts the North Pole, but it repels the other South Pole, but the South Pole is farther away, correct? By definition, it's, it's, you know, it's uh, the other side, right? Okay, so this force of repulsion is weaker than this force of attraction, and therefore, magnets are able to pick up pieces of metal ish yeah little applause well that was easy applause to get there we go okay so remember electric field was uh, electric field said that um, that it was from positive to negative right our definition is that our magnetic field is from north to south right and um, I've got this remarkable thing I bought these things, I thought these would be cool, and they really are cool, but they cost us like $17 each in 1992, right? These are magnaprobes. These are very, very strong magnets, so please don't, when you use them, stick them to pieces of metal, okay? Um, and they're very finely balanced. It's not quite finely balanced enough to, to register Earth's magnetic field, but any other magnet like this, right, it'll actually register pretty well. So let's just see if we can uh, do... Uh, Let's grab this, and this, and this. And the red end of this is actually the, the end that is, um, that is the, the North Pole magnet. Whoops, what did I just do? I maximized the wrong thing. All right, this thing is upside down, and there we have it, right? So if you look at this thing, can we see the red end at all? Yeah, we can see which end's red, can you see? It's the left side up there, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to take some magnet here, um, and this is my little piece of lodestone. We're just going to see what the magnetic field is on it. Notice that the red end likes that part of the rock there. So if the, if the North Pole, whoops, likes that part, and you can see it sort of pointing at it, right? Yeah? Okay. You see that it likes that part of the rock. If the, red, if the North Pole likes that part of the rock, then... That's the South Pole, right? So the North Pole must be on the other side somewhere. There it is. And you can get a pretty good idea where it is because it'll just point at it like one of those dogs. Yeah, that's kind of fun, right? Here's a, a ceramic magnet. These don't come marked, so we can't use the cheating way. But this end is strongly liked by the, red, the North Pole, and the other end is strongly liked by the South Pole. So let's see. If the South Pole likes this side, it must be, must be the North Pole. And then you can see the the magnetic fields. This is kind of cool. You see it going around like that? Isn't that neat? Ta-da. Right? And then these, these, these are big disc magnets from a speaker. Right? This side must be the south pole side. And that side must be the north pole side there. Yeah? And then hard drive magnets. These guys are a little crazy. God, they're hard to... Do you guys ever do the hard drive magnet trick? Uh -oh. oh, these things are fun, right? You take a hard drive magnet out of a hard drive, stick it in a paper cup, stick it to the roof of your car. You're good up to 30 miles an hour. You'd be amazed at how excited people get if you've got a paper cup on your roof and you're driving around. <laughs> I had people walking out into traffic to like tell me that I had a paper cup on my roof. Um, and so I stopped doing it, but you know. <laughs> okay, so... Notice that this guy, this is kind of fun. This guy right here, notice that the red side likes that, but look at this. The blue side likes that thing there, right? It's like, shh. here, I'll hold it like this. So it's like one side is South Pole, the other side is, boom, North Pole, and this thing really wants to get to know that thing. You can't see how fast it's happening because that's doing four frames a second. But anyway, all right. All right. How do I get out? Is that how I get out? Yes. I know I don't have the keyboard right here. Okay. Ah, no. Okay. All right. Okay, now, 
the next thing and this is very cool 